Nancy's fingers traced the edges of the wedding photo on her bedside table, a relic from a time when love was the air she breathed. At 26, she had become a wife to Adam, her charming boss who swept her off her feet. Their courtship had been swift, their connection undeniable. As she stirred her tea in the cozy kitchen, Nancy reminisced about the early days of their relationship, the stolen glances in the office, the shy smiles that spoke volumes. When Adam proposed, it felt like the natural progression of a love story written in the stars. However, as the honeymoon phase faded, unexpected requests started to creep into their married life. One evening, as they shared dinner, Adam's eyes bore into hers with a seriousness that caught her off guard. Nancy, I've been thinking, Adam began, his tone measured. I want you to quit your job. Her spoon clattered against the bowl of soup, the abruptness of his request sending ripples of confusion through her. Quit my job. But, Adam, it's my career. I've worked so hard to get where I am. He smiled, his features softening, I can take care of us, Nancy. You don't need to work. Your place is here, with me. The warmth in his words was a soothing balm, and she agreed, not foreseeing the implications of that decision. Little did she know that the ties binding them would soon transform into chains, and the idyllic love story would take a dark turn. Days turned into weeks, and Nancy found herself navigating the delicate balance between being a wife and maintaining her independence. Adam's expectations shifted, and she felt the weight of his gaze whenever she mentioned her job or career aspirations. One evening, as they sat on the living room couch, she tentatively broached the subject, Adam, I've been thinking. Maybe I could work part-time or find something that allows me to contribute. His eyes, once filled with warmth, turned cold. Nancy, we talked about this. I want you here. Focusing on our home, on us. The atmosphere grew tense, the unspoken words hanging in the air. The ties that once bound them in love now seemed to bind her in suffocating expectations. As the night unfolded, Nancy couldn't shake the feeling that the fairy tale she once believed in was slipping through her fingers, replaced by the rigid expectations of a husband who sought control over every aspect of her life. Nancy's days morphed into a scripted routine, with Adam's expectations dictating her every move. The once tender love they shared twisted into something unrecognizable. The realization struck her when a bout of illness confined her to their shared bed. Weak and feverish, Nancy had expected a modicum of compassion from Adam. Instead, she felt the weight of his disapproval press upon her, suffocating the already stifling air. I can't believe you're lying in bed all day. Pathetic, Adam remarked, his voice dripping with disdain, as he entered the room after a long day at work. But, Adam, I'm really not feeling well, Nancy protested, her voice trembling. He scoffed, you're just being lazy. This is what happens when you don't have a job. You become useless. Her eyes welled with tears, but she dared not let them fall. The man she had married, the one who promised to care for her, had transformed into a stranger. The more her health deteriorated, the more apparent it became that Adam's compassion had evaporated. Days turned into a sickening routine. As Nancy grappled with nausea and fatigue, she found solace in the thought of becoming a mother. It was supposed to be a joyous occasion, a new chapter in their lives. However, when she mustered the courage to share the news, Adam's reaction was anything but celebratory. A child. What have you done? He barked, his characteristically calm tone replaced by a tone she had never heard before. Stunned, Nancy stammered, I haven't been to the doctor yet, so it's not confirmed, but I thought we'd be happy about it. Adam's face darkened, and he retorted, a child. Damn, this is the worst. If you're going to have it, raise it yourself. I don't want anything to do with it. His words hung in the air, suffocating the joy that had bubbled within her just moments ago. The room that was once filled with dreams of a growing family now echoed with the harsh reality that her husband, 
the man she had vowed to share a lifetime with, wanted nothing to do with their unborn child. With a dismissive gesture, Adam stripped off his clothes and headed to the bathroom, leaving Nancy to grapple with the sickening truth. As she lay there, the weight of her illness combined with the emotional turmoil, and the room spun with a nausea that had nothing to do with her physical condition. Nancy, grappling with the emotional turmoil of her deteriorating marriage, couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss. The lingering suspicion led her to search for answers, and she decided to investigate Adam's behavior more closely. One day, as she gathered his clothes for laundry, a piece of paper fluttered out of his dress shirt pocket. Curiosity gnawing at her, she unfolded it to reveal a receipt, a receipt from a motel. What's this? She muttered to herself, her hands trembling as she read the establishment's name. It was a motel, a place with no connection to their lives, or so she thought. As the shock of the discovery coursed through her, Nancy couldn't dismiss the nagging feeling that there was more to this than met the eye. The motel receipt, seemingly innocent, became a catalyst for her determination to uncover the truth. Determined to confront Adam, she waited for the right moment. That evening, as they sat in uneasy silence at the dinner table, she mustered the courage to break it. Adam, we need to talk, she said, her voice steady despite the storm raging within her. He looked up, a feigned innocence in his eyes. About what? Nancy hesitated, then held up the receipt, her gaze unwavering. I found this in your pocket. Care to explain? Adam's face twitched, a subtle shift in his composure. Oh, that? It's nothing, just a business meeting at a different location. Her eyes narrowed, a mix of disbelief and determination in her gaze. A business meeting at a motel. Come on, Adam, I'm not naive. He sighed, realizing the gravity of the situation. Fine, Nancy. It's not what you think. With a mocking smile, Nancy retorted, then enlighten me. What kind of business meeting requires a motel receipt? Adam's eyes darted, his attempt to maintain control faltering. It's complicated, okay? Work-related. Complicated. Work-related. Nancy scoffed, her patience wearing thin. I deserve the truth, Adam. He leaned back in his chair, a smirk playing on his lips. You're always so paranoid. Can't you trust me? Nancy shook her head, determination etched on her face. Trust is earned, Adam. And right now, you're not giving me any reason to trust you. As the tension thickened, Nancy knew she was on the brink of uncovering secrets that could shatter the fragile facade of her marriage. Little did she know that this unsettling discovery was just the beginning of a tumultuous journey. The discovery of the motel receipt catapulted Nancy into a relentless pursuit of the truth. As suspicion gnawed at her, she decided to confront Adam and demand the answers she deserved. In the dimly lit living room, Nancy sat across from Adam, the atmosphere charged with tension. She held the incriminating receipt in her hands, her gaze fixed on him. Adam, we need to talk about this. I can't continue living like this, in the shadows of secrets, she declared, her voice unwavering. He sighed, his eyes avoiding hers. Nancy, it's not what you think. It's just a misunderstanding. A bitter laugh escaped her lips. A misunderstanding. Adam, I found a motel receipt in your pocket. What part of that is a misunderstanding? Adam shifted uncomfortably in his seat. Look, I didn't mean for you to find out this way. It's not about us, Nancy. She leaned forward, her eyes narrowing. Then what is it about? Because it seems pretty clear to me. Adam hesitated, his facade crumbling. Fine, Nancy. There's someone else. I didn't mean for it to happen, but it did. The words hung in the air, a heavy revelation that pierced through Nancy's heart. The woman she had pledged her life to was sharing it with someone else. 
The pain was palpable, and yet, a strange sense of relief washed over her, the truth, no matter how painful, was better than the suffocating uncertainty. You've been cheating on me. Nancy's voice was a mix of disbelief and hurt. Adam avoided her gaze, his guilt ridden across his face. I never meant for it to get this far. It just... happened. The room echoed with the weight of the confession. Nancy, though wounded, found a flicker of strength within. I deserve better, Adam. We deserve better. She reached into her bag and pulled out her phone, dialing her father's number. As the phone rang, Adam's eyes widened in realization. What are you doing? He demanded, panic creeping into his voice. Nancy held up a finger, signaling for him to wait. When her father answered, she spoke with a newfound resolve. Dad, I need you to tell me the truth about Adam. The conversation unfolded, revealing the depth of Adam's deceit. The pieces of the puzzle fell into place, and Nancy felt a strange mix of anger, betrayal, and liberation. I'm done, Adam. I won't let you manipulate me any longer, she declared, ending the call and standing up. As she walked away from the shattered remnants of her marriage, Nancy realized that the unveiling of secrets was the first step towards reclaiming her life and finding a future free from deception. The weight of Adam's betrayal hung heavy in the air as Nancy made the gut-wrenching decision to end her marriage. The revelation of his infidelity was a bitter pill to swallow, but it ignited a spark of strength within her, a determination to break free from the chains that bound her to a toxic relationship. Days turned into nights as Nancy navigated the challenging process of initiating a divorce. Friends became her pillars of support, offering solace and encouragement during the tumultuous journey. One evening, in the company of her closest confidant, Sarah, Nancy gathered the courage to speak about the decision that had altered her life. Sarah, I never imagined it would come to this. The man I loved, the life we built, it's all unraveling, Nancy admitted, her voice tinged with a mixture of sorrow and resolve. Sarah placed a comforting hand on Nancy's shoulder. Nancy, you're doing the right thing. You deserve happiness, not a life of deceit and heartache. As the divorce proceedings progressed, Adam's attempts to manipulate and guilt trip Nancy became more apparent. One day, as they sat across from each other in a lawyer's office, Tension thick in the air, Adam attempted to play the victim. Nancy, can't we work this out? We can go to therapy, fix what's broken, he pleaded, desperation evident in his eyes. She looked at him, her gaze unwavering. Adam, therapy can't mend a relationship built on lies. I need to break free from the chains you've wrapped around me. The divorce papers sat on the table a symbolic declaration of the end of a chapter that had turned into a nightmare. With a heavy heart, Nancy picked up the pen and signed her name, each stroke a step toward reclaiming her life. As the papers were exchanged, Adam's eyes betrayed a mix of regret and resentment. You're making a mistake, Nancy. You'll regret this. Nancy met his gaze, her voice steady. The only mistake was trusting you. I won't regret freeing myself from a life of lies. Walking out of the lawyer's office, Nancy felt the weight of the chain slowly lifting. The path ahead was uncertain, but the promise of a life without deceit and manipulation filled her with a renewed sense of purpose. Nancy's decision to end her marriage sent ripples through Adam's life. Struggling with the consequences of his choices, he found himself facing financial difficulties and a sense of desperation. One evening, as the weight of his decisions pressed down on him, Adam discovered a piece of information that fueled a desperate reach for a lifeline. In a dimly lit apartment, cluttered with the remnants of a life unraveling, Adam paced back and forth. His once confident demeanor had crumbled, replaced by the shadows of desperation. The walls echoed with the hollowness of his surroundings, mirroring the emptiness he felt within. As he scrolled through his phone, Searching for any semblance of stability, Adam's eyes widened at a particular news article. 
The headline screamed about a woman inheriting a multi-million dollar company. Curiosity turned to disbelief when he recognized the woman in the accompanying photo, Nancy. His hands trembled as he dialed her number, the desperation evident in his voice when she answered. Nancy, we need to talk. I've learned something, something that changes everything. Nancy, wary but composed, responded, what could possibly change anything now, Adam? I know about the inheritance, he blurted out, the words rushing out in a desperate plea. Nancy, I need your help. I'm drowning here, and I have nowhere else to turn. There was a moment of silence before Nancy spoke, her tone measured. Adam, my inheritance doesn't change the past. I can't fix what you've broken. His desperation morphed into frustration. Nancy, please. I'm begging you. I've hit rock bottom. I can't survive without your help. A heavy sigh escaped her lips. Adam, your troubles are not my responsibility anymore. I suggest you find a way to stand on your own. The call ended, leaving Adam in a state of disbelief and resentment. He couldn't comprehend how the tables had turned so drastically. The woman he once controlled was now the gatekeeper to a lifeline he so desperately sought. Determined to appeal to her empathy, Adam sent a barrage of messages, each one more desperate than the last. I thought we meant something to each other, he pleaded, his words a mix of regret and manipulation. Nancy, however, remained steadfast, her response is concise. Our marriage ended for a reason, Adam. I can't fix what you've destroyed. It's time for both of us to move on. The desperate reach for salvation clashed with the realization that the consequences of his actions were inescapable. Adam, once the orchestrator of control, found himself at the mercy of a woman who had reclaimed her autonomy. Nancy's resolve to move forward strengthened as Adam's desperate attempts to regain control intensified. With the weight of her inheritance and newfound independence, she made a conscious decision to block the past and build a future free from the toxic shadows that had haunted her. In her newly rented apartment, filled with the echoes of a fresh beginning, Nancy contemplated the messages and missed calls from Adam that had flooded her phone. As she scrolled through the relentless pleas and attempts at emotional manipulation, a sense of determination overcame her. I can't let him drag me back into the darkness, she muttered to herself, her fingers poised over the screen. Ignoring the persistent buzzing of her phone, Nancy proceeded to block Adam's number. It was a symbolic act, a declaration of her commitment to severing ties with the past that had held her captive. The silence that followed brought a sense of relief, a newfound tranquility in reclaiming control over her own narrative. Days turned into weeks and Nancy immersed herself in the process of rediscovering her identity. She rekindled old friendships, explored new hobbies, and embraced the support system that had stood by her through thick and thin. One evening, as she shared a meal with her friend Sarah, the topic inevitably shifted to the recent events. Sarah, with genuine concern in her eyes, asked, Nancy, are you sure you're okay? Blocking him was a big step. Nancy nodded, a sense of empowerment in her response. Sarah, I can't let his past actions dictate my present. I've blocked him, not out of spite, but out of necessity. It's time to close that chapter. Her friend smiled, acknowledging the strength in Nancy's words. You're resilient, Nancy. This fresh start suits you. Don't let anyone dim the light you found within yourself. As the days unfolded, Adam's attempts to reach Nancy continued through various channels, emails, social media messages, and even letters sent to her new address. Each message, however, went unanswered, a testament to Nancy's commitment to building a life free from the toxic remnants of her past. One day, as she stood on the balcony of her apartment, the city skyline stretching before her, Nancy felt a sense of liberation. The decision to block the past had created space for growth and self-discovery. The scars of a tumultuous marriage were healing, 
replaced by the promise of a future built on resilience and newfound independence. With Adam firmly blocked from her life, Nancy embraced the prospect of a fresh start. The echoes of the past were fading, replaced by the anticipation of a new chapter. As she navigated the uncharted territory of independence, unexpected opportunities began to unfold. Nancy's days were filled with a renewed sense of purpose. In her pursuit of self-discovery, she found solace in pursuing long-neglected passions. A chance encounter at a local art class introduced her to Marcus, an artist with a contagious zest for life. As they worked on their respective canvases, Marcus struck up a conversation. You're a natural with the brush. What brought you here? Nancy smiled, grateful for the genuine interest. Life brought me here. A new beginning, you could say. Their connection grew beyond the strokes of paint on canvas. Marcus became a beacon of support, helping Nancy navigate the uncharted waters of her newfound independence. One day, as they sat in a cozy coffee shop, Marcus asked, Nancy, what's next for you? Any plans or dreams you've been itching to pursue? Nancy pondered the question, her gaze fixed on the swirls in her coffee. I want to explore, to build a life on my terms. Maybe even travel, see places I've only dreamed of. Marcus grinned, his eyes reflecting encouragement. That sounds like a plan. I'm here to support you every step of the way. As Nancy's world expanded, an unexpected opportunity presented itself. An old friend from the art class, Julia, introduced her to a project that aligned with her interests. The project aimed to empower women through art, giving them a platform to express their stories and reclaim their narratives. In a meeting with Julia and the other artists involved, Nancy found herself animatedly sharing her vision. Let's create something beautiful, something that empowers others to rise above their challenges. A new beginning for everyone involved. The project took shape, becoming a catalyst for personal growth and community building. Nancy's journey of self-discovery now intertwined with a collective narrative of resilience and empowerment. Meanwhile, the echoes of Adam's desperate attempts to reach her faded into the background. The blocking of his past actions had opened the door to a future filled with possibilities. With each stroke of the brush, each word shared in the company of newfound friends, Nancy embraced the essence of a new beginning, a chapter of her life that promised growth, resilience, and the unwavering pursuit of happiness. As Nancy delved deeper into her journey of self-discovery, she couldn't escape the shadows of her past entirely. The echoes of a tumultuous marriage lingered, prompting her to confront the remnants of a life she had left behind. In facing these shadows, Nancy discovered a reservoir of strength within herself. One day, as she perused a local bookstore, a familiar face caught her eye. It was Lisa, a former colleague from the mobile company where she had worked before meeting Adam. The memories of that workplace, both positive and painful, rushed back. Lisa approached with a warm smile. Nancy, long time no see. How have you been? Nancy hesitated, the shadows of the past flickering in her eyes. Lisa, it's been a journey. A lot has changed. As they chatted over coffee, Lisa couldn't help but ask, how are things with Adam? I heard about the divorce. Nancy sighed, realizing she couldn't escape the conversation entirely. It was necessary, Lisa. I needed to break free from a toxic situation. Now, I'm focused on building a life for myself. Lisa nodded understandingly. You deserve happiness, Nancy. Don't let the shadows of the past dictate your present. Encouraged by Lisa's words, Nancy decided to confront another lingering shadow, the company where she had once worked. With determination in her heart, she reached out to a few old colleagues who had remained friends. During a reunion with them, the topic of her departure and subsequent divorce naturally surfaced. David, a close friend from the company, asked, Nancy, what really happened? You left so suddenly. 
Nancy took a deep breath, ready to confront the shadows. David, it's a long story. Adam and I had differences that I couldn't overlook. Leaving the company was a part of reclaiming my life. David frowned, empathy in his eyes. I had no idea, Nancy. I'm sorry you went through that. But I'm glad to see you moving forward. As Nancy navigated these challenging conversations, she discovered that confronting the shadows didn't weaken her instead, it fortified her resolve. The whispers of judgment and speculation were overshadowed by the support of those who genuinely cared for her well-being. In a pivotal moment, as she walked past the building that once held both her dreams and struggles, Nancy realized the significance of her journey. Confronting the shadows doesn't erase the past, but it empowers me to define my future. As Nancy approached the culmination of her transformative journey, the metaphorical ashes of her past began to reveal the phoenix within. The final chapter beckoned, a testament to her resilience and the rebirth of a woman who had risen from the ashes of a tumultuous marriage. One evening, as she sat on the balcony of her apartment, gazing at the city lights, Marcus joined her. The night air carried a sense of calm, a stark contrast to the storm she had weathered. Marcus broke the silence, his voice gentle yet filled with admiration. Nancy, you've come a long way. I've seen you grow, rediscover yourself. It's inspiring. Nancy smiled, gratitude in her eyes. Marcus, you've been a beacon of support. I couldn't have done it without you. He chuckled, a warmth in his tone. You had the strength within you all along, Nancy. I just helped you see it. As the days unfolded, Nancy found herself drawn to a local support group for women who had faced similar challenges. In a circle of shared stories and shared strength, she realized the power of solidarity. During one of the group sessions, she spoke with newfound conviction. To all the women here, our pasts don't define us. We're rising from the ashes, stronger and more resilient. Let's embrace the journey ahead. The camaraderie within the group fueled a collective spirit of empowerment. These women, like Nancy, were rewriting their narratives, turning the ashes of their pasts into foundations for a brighter future. Another significant moment came when Nancy received an invitation to showcase her artwork in a local gallery. The project she had initiated, the one focused on empowering women through art, had gained attention. Julia, her partner in the endeavor, shared in the joy. Nancy, our project is making waves. We're not just reclaiming our stories, we're creating a platform for others to do the same. With the gallery exhibition looming, Nancy poured her heart into each canvas, each stroke a celebration of her newfound strength. As the opening night arrived, friends, colleagues, and even those from the support group gathered to witness the culmination of her journey. In a touching moment, Lisa, the former colleague from the mobile company, approached Nancy. I've been following your journey, Nancy. You've turned the page on a painful chapter, and tonight, you're opening a new one. Nancy nodded, gratitude filling her heart. It's a rebirth, Lisa. From the ashes, I've found my wings. The gallery echoed with whispers of admiration and inspiration. As Nancy's artwork spoke volumes about her journey, the attendees realized that this wasn't just an exhibition, it was a testament to the resilience of the human spirit.